from MTN Sports, this is Bobcat Replay. Well, over the last couple of seasons, Bozeman, Montana has become one of the toughest places to play in the FCS. 15 consecutive wins inside the confines of Bobcat Stadium. As today, number four Montana State looks for 16 straight W's when they welcome in Idaho State on homecoming. And with that, we welcome you high above Bobcat Stadium, everyone, alongside the former defensive coordinator with this Montana State program, Ty Gregorak. I'm Ben Creighton. Ashley Washburn will join us downstairs in just a couple moments. Ty, you've coached inside the stadium on both sidelines. You know how hectic it can get here in Bozeman when any opponent comes into town. No question. Every, every game's going to be sold out this fall. 20,000 plus of Bobcat Nation. Picture perfect day in the Gallatin Valley. I still got uh, uh, chills from that flyover, man. It's a great day for college football. Uh, it's going to be an amazing day for football. Ball. And talk about amazing. How about Sean Chambers the last two weeks, the FCS National Player of the Week following that huge performance last week against UC Davis. You know, early in the season, I called this guy the, the Swiss Army knife of the team. Now I just call him the sword. Ever since his number's been called when Tommy Malott went down against Eastern Washington, he's been nothing short of special. Last week proved it. Yeah, he has been absolutely balling the co-Big Sky Offensive Player of the Week. Now, it's been a struggle so far for Idaho State with that 0-5 record, but new head man Charlie Ragel has absolutely raved about his top wideout in Xavier Guillory. Well, the guy's just been productive, and he's had to do it with three different quarterbacks. Throwing the third-string quarterback, great young, young, young talent there in Pocatello. This guy's going to be a star in this league. Yeah, eighth nationally and the leader in the Big Sky in receiving yards this season. And... It's been very favorable for Montana State when it comes to homecoming against the Bengals. A terrific record for Montana State. Bobcat Replay kicks off with the first quarter right after this. Let's get things started with the first quarter on Bobcat Replay. And you know it's going to be another sellout here in Bobcat Stadium. A line drive, a squibbler to get things going as Idaho State will receive the kickoff to get things going, and it's going to be Benjamin Omayabu. Sagan Gronauer in this Idaho State offense will come out on the field for the first time today. Again, the third string for Idaho State as he rolls on play action, and the first one is complete to Xavier Gilroy. And again, he's their top target, and right out of the gates they go to him in a first down. Little split zone read action, just got the over route. That's the guy they got to keep an eye on, too. Guillory's a playmaker now. Again, the leader in the big sky, as well as eighth in the FCS in receiving yards this season. Second and five near midfield, Gronauer. Once again, it takes a big licking near the 35-yard line. Once again, Xavier Gilroy. Play action again, Gronauer. He's going to loft it up, and he's got wide open target. Touchdown, Idaho State. Talk about a quick start as they go to Jaden James. You couldn't have asked for a better start if you're this Idaho State offense. No, they go bunch into the boundary, so they got overload into the boundary. It looks like a cover three scheme. Miscommunication because we should have a deep corner there. A little breakdown in the secondary for Montana State. As Ian Hershey nails the PAT. A 7-0 lead for Idaho State. I mean, he, again, it's not just on the ground. He's shown that he can throw it. I mean, he showed it as well at Wyoming as on third down pocket collapsing. And wide open for a first time. He goes to the other tight end and Trey Pickering. Yep, they gave a spread look there, two by two. Looked like 10 personnel, but it Let's wasn't. Look at the production. Trayton Pickering coming into this game was third in receiving for this Bobcat squad. So definitely utilizing those tight ends early on. Second and seven. We give to Elijah Elliott. Runs up field and gets inside the 15. Good hard run there by Elijah Elliott. Going back, going back to the tight ends, you know. Chambers looking to do it himself, plowing up the middle. And he'll get taken down at around the two-yard line. And that's going to pick up a first down for R.J. Fitzgerald as well as Lane Sumner to give to the fullback. And Fitzgerald's going to plow over the goal line and get into the end zone. His second TD of the season. Montana State answering right back. Awesome to see. You know, a guy, a guy has spent so much time in this program. He's a heart and soul type guy. He, he, he's a bell cow. 
Dylan Montana boy, he hadn't had one touchdown prior to three weeks ago. Now he's got two touchdowns in the last three weeks. It's awesome to see for RJ. Offense, so you can tell Montana State's defense changed their call too. Under pressure, gets hit as he throws, and that one is picked up. James Campbell. Campbell following blockers. And the second straight week with a pick for James Campbell. All starts up front, Ben. All starts up front. Great job by Sebastian Valdez and others getting pressure on the quarterback. Great job by James Campbell. James Campbell didn't have a, an interception until last week. Now he's got two. Right into the hands as he was trying to find Christian Fredrickson was saving Gronauer. Field again for Sean Chambers. R.J. Fitzgerald, the man in motion. Chambers zigzagging his way, and the ball popped loose. Chambers had that one jarred loose. And it's still going to remain Montana State football. Second and goal. Chambers up the gut. And the leading touchdown rusher in the FCS gets into the blue turf again. Yeah, they went with their big personnel. You can see they kind of made an A-frame there in the backfield. Two big bodies in front of them. Big, big bodies. First and ten, another give to Raiden Hunter, bouncing to the outside. Trying to dance his way, able to get out of a couple tackles and picks up a first down. A good run right there by the guy who came into this season, number one in the depth chart at that running back spot. Rowan Hour, quick find to Xavier Gilroy. And a big hit laid out, Jeffrey Manning there. We'll end the first quarter here at Bobcat Stadium. A 14-6 Montana State lead as again the offense responded after Idaho State got on the board quickly. Another big crowd here in Bozeman. Quarter number two coming up on the other side. Get social with Bobcat fans and follow MTN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, here's the second quarter on Bobcat Replay. During that 2019 campaign, give to Lane Sumner. Bounces off a couple blocks and into open space, but eventually taken down to the 29-yard line. This one from about 24 yards, Glesner. Right through the uprights. A 17-6 lead for Montana State, the fourth-ranked Bobcats. Yeah, Tyler Vanderwall does have an MRI on Monday, so we'll see if he'll get the green light heading into next week. And wrapped up in the backfield, and your guy, Nolan Askelson, with the stop. Two hours. And in motion, the pitch. James finds a hole, a stiff arm, and rumbles out of bounds. Ford. First and ten near midfield. Pressure coming, and the ball's on the turf. And it's a fumble, and it's going to be scooped up by Montana State. Wayne Sumner finds a hole. And Sumner with a burst of speed. And taken out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Lane Sumner, welcome back. Chambers this time doing work with his legs. Chambers. As he strikes into the end zone, Sean Chambers, once again, you see that smile, you know he loves his new home here in Bozeman as he once again puts up six for the Bobcats. Well, I don't chart it, but this is the most 12 personnel I think I've seen consistently out of the Bobcat offense. That two tight end look, read zone, and again, low red, Sean Chambers. Chambers, the handoff. And a first down, another handoff is going to go to Trayton Picker, or excuse me, Derek Snell. Chambers looking to go to the air again, slings it. As he finds Elijah Elliott, and he'll move the sticks once again. And clock winding here as Chambers gets the high snap. Dumps it off Lane Sumner, trying to get past a trio of Bengal defenders, but wisely runs out of bounds to stop the clock. Good quick play, get some yardage, get out of bounds, stop the clock like you said. 
Short passes to Lane Summer like you saw there as well as Elijah Elliott. Chambers keeps it himself up the gut once again into the end zone. Sean Chambers for the third time today gets into the end zone for six. Champ here, Ben. Whammy! Man, this kid just likes to score touchdowns. Never this season would I imagine you'd use an anchorman reference in a broadcast. But it's, it's only our second game together, Ben. That's true. Well, it was an interesting time to take a timeout. When there was 20 seconds left. Things aren't going your way. It'll be interesting to see what they do here if they can get some yardage. There's Xavier Gilroy, and the ball popped loose. This could be another forced fumble by Montana State. And it will be Bobcat football. Another takeaway by this Montana State D. East High School, Woodbury, Minnesota. Captain Ty Okada with another turnover. Awesome. I'm sorry, it's not a turnover. It's a takeaway, Ben. That's a takeaway. Well, they're on track to take that average down a little bit. Chambers with a strike. And he's got a wide open man, Cleveland Thomas, still at three seconds left. That, that's a huge play right there because the, he gets the ball out of bounds. Lesnar trying to increase this Montana State lead even more, heading into half. And that one is good. 34 to 6 lead, Montana State. Montana State, a commanding 34 6 lead. At the break here in Bozeman, halftime coming up here from Bobcat Stadium. Take coverage of the Cats with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Time for the third quarter on Bobcat Replay. Number four, Montana State with a 34-6 lead as we get ready to start the third quarter. And standing by with Brent Vegan, we send it back down to Ashley Washburn. Coach, electric first half of offense. What have you seen from this team, especially those three touchdowns by Sean Chambers? Well, we're moving the ball well, and, and, and it's been a bit more methodical than, than some of these games. And that's, that's what you want to see, our ability to execute on uh, third downs has been, been really good. Uh, I think we're, we're split pretty much. Uh, you know, running and passing as far as our yardage goes. Um, so good first half by the offense. We've been opportunistic as far as taking advantage of those turnovers too, those takeaways that the defense had. So we need a, uh, an effort this second half that, uh, that finishes this game off. Sagan Gronauer today, 10 of 14, is had a decent afternoon, 123 yards as he rolls to his right and chucks it over to his top wideout. And Xavier Gilroy gets to the 40 and knocked out of bounds. And once again, let's go down to the field with Ashley Washburn. It's been an exciting homecoming here at Bobcat Stadium, but one of the best moments actually happened before kickoff. Emily Frazier singing the national anthem while her dad, Captain Frazier, flew over Bobcat Stadium in one of those fighter jets. What was that moment like for both of you? Uh, it was awesome. I mean, it was, it was a long time coming. Uh, I've wanted to do it for a really long time. I'm very proud of my daughter. We, uh, we started coordinating this a little over a month and a half ago, trying to see if we could make it happen. Uh, I thank the athletic department for helping us out to get this to happen. Thank the Navy for giving me all the opportunities that I've had. And I'm just so proud of Emily for just all that she does too. Now, Emily, you're a first year student here. You get to sing the national anthem, but as you're singing those last couple words, you see those jets fly right over you. I mean, was it a little emotional? What was going through your head? It was just so surreal. I didn't really feel like it was actually happening, and I was just, I was tearing up during that last moment for sure. Well, and this is somewhat of a true homecoming for your guys' family. You guys just moved out here this summer. You're a lifelong Bobcat fan, though. You're from Bozeman. You went to Bozeman High School. How much of a homecoming was this game for you? This is a, this is really big to me. You know, and I'm seeing friends and, and uh, people I haven't seen for so long, and they're coming down and saying hi to me after, you know, when we're down there in the end zone. Um, I'm excited to kind of like fun ba come back here and settle down a little bit, spend more, a lot more time with my family. That's really important. Yeah. And Emily, you've lived in a lot of different places. Does Bozeman feel like home already? Even though I've only lived here for a few months, it's already home for sure. And last question for me, lifelong Bobcat fan, I know you've been following this team. You saw them play in that national championship this year. What excites you about this team? A lot of energy. There is a lot of energy, and these guys have a lot of talent. They have a lot of talent, for sure. There's so much school spirit, too. It's really great. Yeah, the school yeah. spirit, for sure. <laughs> no doubt about that. Well, thank you so much for your service. Enjoy homecoming. We'll send it back up to the booth for you guys.
Ronauer slings it, and that one is picked off. Following blockers, Jeffrey Manning. And he'll get knocked out of bounds. Another takeaway by this Montana State defense. It almost looked like a busted route. Or just, just, a, just a miscommunication. He zigged when he thought he was zagging. Jeffrey's right there in the right place, right time. Another takeaway for MSU's defense. Wyoming Gatorade Player of the Year back in 2019. As he finds a hole and picks up a good run there and another Montana State first down. Chambers looking to throw again. Escapes. Batted away. No flag. Now the give to Hunter. Breaks away from Nolan Askelson. Then swallowed up by a trio of Bobcat defenders. Well, they went a, four, a really wide, four-wide split there. And so what, what, that, what that does is it takes the inside linebacker out and removes him, puts him in space, puts the nickel, who usually plays in space. He's out to the field. But now you've got one single linebacker in there who's got to make that play. So Callahan was a little bit late, but he was removed. No one just, you know. That's going to end the third quarter here at Bobcat Stadium. Still a 34-6 lead for the fourth-ranked Bobcats. It's been all MSU ever since that first drive for Idaho State looking for another home win in front of their home fans. There's more coverage of the Bobcats online anytime at montanasports.com. Get ready for the fourth quarter on Bobcat Replay. Over the middle again going to his top wide out and takes a big hit and that one is picked off. Callahan O'Reilly with INT number three this season as he gets to midfield. Awesome. Awesome play by Callahan. Awesome play by Callahan. The kid's got three interceptions on the year. Two obviously came in that first game. Right place, right time. In and out of the hands. Ready short delivering that big blow. And we got a new quarterback, Ben. Yep, Sean Austin into the game today. And he'll dump it off right on cue to Derek Snell. And the tight end rumbles with a stiff arm. Stays on his feet and finally taken down. A 48-yarder. Right through. Blake Lesnar with a big boot. Makes it 37-6, Montana State. Here's who Brent Vegan has lost to in a year and a half. Wyoming, Oregon State, and national champion North Dakota State. The guy deserves a ton of credit. No question. And, and dragging a couple of defenders for a first down. Brian Lonergan. Also getting some run here in the fourth quarter. Also a Bozeman Hawk Ben. Local kid. Love it. Yeah, good opportunity here. Some of these guys, again, to get some good playing time here in the fourth quarter. And that one up off the upright. That's too bad because it really has been a clean game. It's been a good game for the Bobcats. Too bad, too bad to see the block there at the end. This will be the final play of this one, and it will be a keeper. And a fumble, and the game's going to end on another Montana State takeaway. Why wouldn't it, Ben? I mean, that's what you call a par for the course. Par for the course right there. Another takeaway for Willie Mack's defense. Great job by the D today. Yeah, they really stepped up after Idaho State struck first and very quickly on their first drive. But Montana State takes it 37-6 over Idaho State. But once again, Montana State comes out on top, remains undefeated in the big sky, 37-6 the final over Idaho State. For Ty Gregorak, Ashley Washburn, and the rest of our terrific MTN crew, I'm Ben Creighton saying so long from Bobcat Stadium here in Bozeman where the Cats roll over the Bengals. So long, everyone.